Hello everyone, welcome back to the Dear Future Farm D Talk Show Season 2, Episode Number 3. Today, I'm very honored to have two very influential um, media personas in pharmacy meet with me today. First, let's welcome Dr. Jamie Wilkie. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here and just have a conversation with you too. Again, for those who haven't been active around LinkedIn, Dr. Wilkie is uh, the top three most <laughs> followed PharmD on the platform. She's also the co-founder of Wealthy White Coat. We are very honored to have her here today with us. Also have our current P2 student at Torrey University, California College of Pharmacy, as well as one of our student producers here at the Student Arts Network. Diana, welcome. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here today. Again, Diana creates great content on her pod, um, sorry, on her pharmacy journey through TikTok. And uh, the links will be down below for you to follow and check them out. Uh, so please give a follow if you like um, the content that we create. Link is down below in the description for any other media that we have. Thank you both for taking a time out for a busy day today and come on to our show. Let's get this started. So first off, let's start with you, Diana. What made you pursue pharmacy initially? And were there any particular challenges uh, along the way? For me, pharmacy school, um, choosing pharmacy, first of all, as a career, I totally wasn't even aware of the career existing for a very long time. Um, I honestly started looking for pursuing. I, always, I knew I wanted to be in healthcare, but I wanted to be in a career that I felt like I didn't have to juggle much of a work-life balance. Um, I wanted that balance there for me. I wanted to still have that like human interaction uh, with like the blend of science as well. So I honestly, when I was going through a different couple of careers, um, just like, I think it was like this website, our high school um, prep teacher, it was like our homeroom prep. And they would give us like a little quiz on what career you can um, like go into or a career that you should be pursuing in. And it gave me an answer as like a pharmacist. And I was like, I, I, it wasn't a like initial thought for me to be like, oh yeah, I want to do pharmacy or pharmacy is a really good idea to probably pursue a career in. So I did a bit more research and I kind of like left to the side until it was like time for my junior, senior year. So I grad, I was taking college credits in high school and um, that helped me graduate a year early from high school. And it was kind of a time crunch for me there because I was going into college and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. So with the help of my older sisters, I just, I was like, I just sat down. I was like, I don't know what I want to do. Like there's this career, but I have no, there's like pharmacy, but I want to do labor and delivery as a labor delivery nurse. And I just didn't have experience in both areas. So I decided to become an apprentice at Walgreens and um, it just kind of really solidified that, okay, this is a career I can see myself going into. And then of course, getting into pharmacy school was its own challenge. Um, it was trying, I tried to, I gave myself a year after high, after graduating high school to finish all my prereqs for pharmacy school. And it was kind of like a challenge at that time to like take, like I believe one semester I was taking like four classes. I was taking um, anatomy, physiology, no, not, yeah, anatomy, physiology, calculus, and my last general, my last organic chemistry class. And while working two jobs and um, trying to also maintain my sanity at home and keep up my social life as well. So there was a bit like long nights, um, early mornings, uh, as they say. It was a lot of preparation to get into pharmacy school. And I was honestly super excited to be, once I found out that I got it, I was super excited to start pharmacy, my career, um, working in pharmacy, really solidified what I wanted to do and everything like that. So. After coming into pharmacy school, I felt like I saw a bigger, more um, like array or variation of the different fields you can go in, which is another reason I chose pharmacy because with one PharmD degree, you can go from emergency med to ambulatory care to working with insurances, PBMs. You can do so many, so many things out there with the pharmacy degree. And I wanted that. I wanted that flexibility for myself later on. I didn't want to be you know, kind of like stuck down to one job and forever. I'm a person who gets like, you know, kind of bored with like a job really quickly. So I want to have some different variations. And seeing that I can do that in pharmacy, it really made me like, okay, this is something I want to do later on. I don't want to be only stuck to one career. I would want to have multiple different career paths out there. As well as just having that, like, for, I feel like pharmacists are pretty much the unsung heroes of 
the healthcare system. Not many know they're very underutilized out there with the amount of information we learn and the amount of work that like we pretty much do, we're underutilized. We can do much more. And I'm happy to see that later on as a pharmacy progresses later on. But that's kind of my spiel on how I got to pharmacy. Sorry, that was a long thing, but how I got to pharmacy and how I was interested in pharmacy. But pretty much the challenges for me were just trying to get into pharmacy school because I was um, I was very much younger than most, most of my classmates. It was kind of hard for me to, the first couple of weeks, just navigate everything. Coming out of undergrad and graduate school is two different worlds almost. Like my study techniques changed. I I used to go into an exam not studying, like probably study the night before, skim over the pages in undergrad. And now I have to be skimming those pages like five, seven times or doing like eight passes before I go into an exam. So there are some challenges um, in pharmacy school, but before pharmacy school, it's pretty much just smooth sailing going through in. But um, once I entered pharmacy school, that's when kind of the challenges started. But you learn a lot about yourself. You really do learn about yourself, about what you're learning. It's a great experience. Thank you. Um, actually, to follow up with Dr. Luki, I knew you that you went to a school that is like kind of have a connected program between undergrad and grad. Is that correct? Uh, correct. So I went to the University of Wyoming and my story is a little different than Diana's. I didn't have to decide what to do to pick pharmacy. My dad was a hospital administrator. He was the CFO. So he's the money guy at a hospital all growing up. And one day in the middle of high school, he came home and he said, Jamie, I sign the pharmacist paycheck every month. And I really think you should be a pharmacist. And I was like, okay, <laughs> sign me up. I'll get a doctorate degree. I'll have a six-figure salary when I graduate. Like, done. Like, no deciding that checks my boxes. And so like Diana, I was also uh, incredibly motivated to get through things quickly. And so I went to the University of Wyoming where they had a two-year undergraduate program, and then you could apply to their pharmacy school. So I got in without a bachelor's degree or anything. So my only degree is my doctorate degree. So I could get through school in <laughs> the amount of time most of my friends were getting their bachelor's degree. So it was a lot of work at the beginning. And I feel like those prerequisite courses were the hardest because once I got into pharmacy school, I was like, okay, now I can just kind of kick back and enjoy and like obviously pass my classes. But there was that sense of relief that like, I just have to pass. I'm still a good student, but like the pressure is over and it just was really fun. I loved pharmacy school. Great. Um, okay, I guess, you know, moving on from, you know, that part of your life, Dr. Wilkie, like, I know you, again, did actually practice at a community setting before. Um, were there any good moments when you were practicing um, as a community pharmacist? Oh, yeah. So I spent 10 years working as a community pharmacist, and it was like the perfect job. It's exactly why I went to pharmacy school, so I could work part-time while I had kids. I eventually had four little boys and it was the perfect job to just work like clock in and clock out, have work that I enjoy that takes intelligence and takes thinking. And like, I get to interact with people because I'm a very people person. So I loved seeing people every day. Work was energizing to me. And when I got a paycheck that felt like my time was actually worth it compared to what my friends were making, everything about it was energizing. So I really enjoyed those 10 years of retail and don't let anyone knock retail pharmacy in pharmacy school. I know everyone like is pushing the residency and like all the hoity toity career paths, but truly there is so much value and honor in re retail pharmacy. And it was a joy to work there. Yeah, definitely. I think I certainly agree with that. You know, the importance of community pharmacists cannot be underestimated. Uh, I just want to follow up with Diana, actually, from here. Are there any particular work experience that you had that, again, you, you mentioned that you worked at Walgreens as an apprentice before, but any rotation or current work experience you have that you really pushed you for to, you know, you, that you made the right decision to join pharmacy as a career? Yeah, so working, I've currently, well, I've previously worked at Walgreens and then I'm currently working with CVS now, but um, I did a rotation at Safeway. I've just done, um, so for retail um, rotations, and honestly, it's been going, some of the experiences I've had 
were positively were <laughs> generally positive, but they there are some negative experiences out there in pharmacy, and it is just I real so let's just backtrack for a moment. But I do remember the first week I started at Walgreens, and I was very young, and I just I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't get trained very well <laughs> in the beginning, so I was just kind of put on the workforce and just going and working on, and it was very hard being out there um not knowing what to do and i wasn't usually in like i previously worked at starbucks beforehand so i wasn't used to anybody coming and yelling at me like in the beginning or not knowing how to pronounce any of the medications i it was i would butcher the names of all the medications <laughs> and they would already kind of know that oh she she's kind of new here she doesn't know what she's kind of doing and a lot of patients would point that out straight up blatantly like do you know what you're doing <laughs> are you are you sure like you know you can handle my medications and there are some negative, but as time goes on, you do grow in your role. You do grow more in what you're doing and what you're learning about mostly. And I feel like there's been the positives always, uh, always outweigh the negatives. Always being there to answer any questions or helping somebody out, it kind of puts you like, okay, they're, they're more at relief because like I'm helping them out. Or somebody, I remember um, it was in Walgreens, I believe they picked up the wrong medication or something like that. And they called immediately to just make sure that everything was fine because they only taken one pill and they just wanted to make sure that everything was fine. And the pharmacist kind of like jumped in because of the, it was a technician's error. They jumped in, made sure everything was fine, got them checked into the ER. They went to the ER, they got them to the ER. But kind of, like I said, the positives outweigh the negatives. So there are many scenarios like that, that I'm trying to think of one, sorry. <laughs> I cannot think of anything right now, but um, I just want to pretty much say that the positives do outweigh the negatives. Yeah, no worries. I think what you actually provided is a really, really good experience in terms of like the, there is areas that like, you know, you have a positive influence on a patient, but there's also negatives. And I really like that perspective. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, Dr. Wilkie? Oh, yeah. As with any job, there's so many positives and negatives, and it's easy to just get in one camp or the other and be like, this is the greatest job ever, or it is the worst ever. And life isn't like that. It's just a blend of positive and negative. And particularly with pharmacy, I guess it feels like it's higher stakes because lives are with, at risk. And like if you're dispensing medication, true harm can happen, which is part of why we are so highly trained and highly compensated. And so it's just part of the job, which is fun and yet there's also a lot of responsibility too on our part yeah and uh, speaking about that you know um i know now you're not working in a community setting or i believe you don't even have an active pharmacist license right now uh at what point of your career when you realize a change is needed in your career um in your journey, right? Was pharmacy burnout a primary reason or is there any particular reason that you decide to branch out? Um, it, it wasn't particularly burnout. I think I just had done the job long enough and felt like I could check it off of my interest list. Like Diana, I have a lot of varied interests and I don't want to do the same thing forever. And so for 10 years, having that safe job that I could cluck into, friends I could see at work, like and seeing that that job's not going to change for 40 years, it felt like, okay, now we're at a good financial situation. My kids are getting older and my interests have changed. So I'm kind of, I'm a very creative person. And so I just felt like the switch flip about three years ago and like, okay, and now I'm done. So <laughs> I just felt like that was complete. It was fun, but I, it's not something I want to go back to. It wasn't a bad job. It served me really well, but I just wanted to do something different and use my creativity in new ways and see what this internet thing is about because all this time I kind of lived under a rock and was only working, like clocking in and out for my job and finally got with the times and saw that like with an internet connection and a computer, you can make money online. You can make a difference online and you can work in cool ways that I never learned about in pharmacy school. So I had to give it a try. Yeah, for sure. Uh, would you like to just, I guess, generally speak about like, um, you know, your current work uh, in terms of like being active involved in media? as well as like what geared you towards the field of precision medicine? 
Okay, that's a lot of questions. So what got me out of Walgreens and into a new career path was precision medicine because I saw one of my close family members almost died from an adverse drug reaction that should have never been happened if genetic testing had been done before prescribing a very common medicine. And so that started my wheels turning of like, this is a huge problem in the world. Why is no one solving it? Pharmacists are perfect for this. So I just kind of put myself into practice in a really scrappy way in Utah and started seeing patients and going to a clinic and working in a clinic. And then all the while I was sharing online because I created a LinkedIn account three years ago in 2020. And every day since I created it, I've written online. Now I write online twice a day because I love it so much and just shared my journey. And while doing that, um, other pharmacists reached out and asked how I created my practice. So I created an online course and that has grown to a seven figure course and I've created other courses and other businesses. And it's just kind of been a domino effect of like, what am I interested in? I'd like to talk about it online and then see what problems come up and a few of them I can solve and charge money for. So I'm going to do that. And it's just been really fun and scrappy and not like a, a stuffy formal business plan that an MBA would create. I'm just out there like having fun, solving problems and working only on projects I want to work on and leaving everything else for someone else who that is their perfect thing. Speaking about your diversity and having the creativity to create something like that, I really applaud you. <laughs> and having actually the, the guts to, to try something like that, right? I think it's very amazing, um, honestly. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Diana? That is honestly a, a great plan, a great journey so far. Um, that is, I mean, wow, that's, I'm speechless. That is Something I've always seen, you know, LinkedIn is something that we have been like encouraged to post some more and get our professional networking in. But I never thought that, you know, going from one place to another, you can really do something like that. For pharmacists, you know, there's always that general thinking of either retail, hospital, or, you know, insurance. And you just put pharmacy in another whole like world out there, which is a really great idea, honestly. And at the end, it works out for something you want to do as well as having like you can also make a business out of it, which is a really, really great idea to have. Yeah. Just like Diana is doing in real life, like it, all it takes is you putting your voice out there because everyone in the world, especially our profession, especially healthcare loves to scroll and see what's going on, but few people create and share their voice. And those people who do get so many more opportunities than everyone else who's hiding behind the lines, like trying to get their resume perfect with all the letters after their name so that then an amazing job will hire them. Diana and I just create our own perfect job and we start by putting our voice out there, even if we don't know how it's going to unfold, like just sharing our experience, sharing our voice has been so fun and it feels like such a privilege to reach so many people in a time in the world that no one else has been able to in the past that it feels like, how could we not? Exactly. I totally feel the same way. Uh, not, I don't know much. Well, my journey kind of started with not knowing much of pharmacy students or pharmacists on TikTok, except for like a couple of them, which I followed before I got into pharmacy school, just because you kind of want an insight on their life or what they're doing mm -hmm. today. And like, what are they specifically doing? How much are they studying? Or like, what are the aesthetics of the, like, the job or something like that? And I, I couldn't find that much online for pharmacists. And I feel like pharmacists are kind of more generally tend to be more introverted than extroverted. Yeah. So that's why we don't like <laughs> disclose much about the career or like we're kind of gatekeeping their career or something like that. But it I saw that that, that was needed out there. And it was kind of, I kind of didn't want to start it. I was like, oh, no, it's okay. Maybe like it's just going to be too much. I wouldn't have time for it. And I really, I really do like posting and filming content. It's honestly, if I would have it as a full-time job, I definitely will do, especially about if I'm like, especially like, you know, filming content at work. I sometimes like take pictures of the pills at work or anything that seems cool that I can post online and share. And people like to see that. They don't usually see what's going on behind the counters. They don't see half of the things or more than half the things that we're doing so just giving them the little insight of like okay this is how we do this or like this is how we like count or like fill like you know your prescriptions or dispense them out that just gives them a little bit more like of a sense of like it gives them like that personal like touch to it that they can see oh so this is what you do in a daily like i do daily like day in the life so like what i do in the day pretty much as a pharmacy student 
it's mostly just studying, going to school, or coming back home, or getting coffee. And you know, some people like to see that, and that just makes me happy. Or helping somebody out there. I know some, a couple of people personally messaged me and was like, "How did you get into pharmacy school?" Or helping them getting into pharmacy school. They, and I think, in the beginning of my channel, somebody messaged me on like how to get into pharmacy school, and like a couple of weeks ago, they contacted me again and said. Thank you for your advice. I actually got into pharmacy school with your advice. Yeah. It, it just makes me so happy to, you know, help somebody out there or help them pursue a career. It, just that one person, it really changes your, like, your entire mood for it. They're just, like, you feel happy that you help and lead somebody the right path. And I'm so glad, you know, you guys have the initiative to do this. And I believe, you know, we can show way much more of what pharmacists do uh, or what other pharmacy staff do to the public and so we can improve our, you know, the general reputation. You know, as you know, like there is a lot of scrutiny going around with company settings and like how like patients perceive pharmacists or in, in pharmacy in general. Um, and there's a lot of things they don't understand. Like I wish we could ever, if we don't violate HIPAA, show them what's a prioritization or show them what, you know, what the pharmacists go for clinically to make sure you're actually taking the right medications instead of, the general perspective of putting pills in the bottle. And I truly believe that it's initiatives um, that will help drive this field forward. And I'm so glad you guys have taken that initiative. And actually you covered my question as well, Diana. I was about to ask like, what kind of, what, what's the thought behind starting off, you know, your TikTok journey and capturing your pharmacy experience? But I guess you have answered that <laughs> in regards to that. Yeah, it really is helping other people. It's not like, oh, I want this spotlight. Like, I want to be so famous. Like, we both feel the same way that like, we just want to help other people. And what we had to go through was like rough or hard or awkward, or we just didn't have the find the resources we were looking for. So we just felt compelled that like, it's not out there. No one's doing this. We have to share a voice just to help someone else. It's been really fun. Exactly. My number one thought was that I, whenever I would scroll through TikTok, it would be like, okay, I'm a nurse or I, I'm a doctor. I'm a like phys, a PA and never would you see, I'm a pharmacist. Let me show you what I do in a day in life. Or those like YouTube, because I used to watch a lot of like YouTube, <laughs> YouTube videos on like what pharmacists do or what nurses do or something like that. And pharmacists would like, you would find a couple of videos on like if some people wanted to post it, it was just really lacking out there. So I felt like maybe just one person just to show what the career is about and guide others on their journey to pharmacy school or just make them help them decide that if pharmacy is for them or not. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, actually, I'll full back to Dr. Wilkie. Um, how was Wealthy White Co started and how did your business overall change your perspective on how a PharmD uh, should be viewed? Oh, Wealthy White Coat was started when I sold my first business um, at the end of last year. So I created this business and I ran it myself, like figured it all out, bootstrapped it up to be a multi six figure company. And then I knew I needed more help to grow it. And so um, I just <laughs> hired someone to help me sell my business and we actually sold the business. So I had a partial six figure exit from this business. And I brought in two partners who have experience with um, online businesses and marketing to help me grow it even more. And it's been really exciting to see that not only can business like help you earn either the same or more as what you're earning when you clock in and out to a job, but it can actually be an asset that you can sell. So when I sold it, there was no physical product. There was no building. There was no uh, supplies. Like it was all like intellectual property and like logins to my software. And so it was really cool to see that I could earn more than six figures like selling this asset that's a business that didn't exist before. And so it's just given me more excitement and more courage to create more things because truly whatever you want to create, you can create and you can ultimately change a lot of lives or sell it or grow on it in the future. And it doesn't even have to require like a physical product. It's just such a cool time to be alive and to be creating, especially with the specialized knowledge we have, because there's no competition, none. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that, that sounds great. You know, um, I, I, I don't know. Cause I was thinking, you know, how, you know, your journey so far is so unique and it took a like really like 
almost like nine degree turn on things. If you tell yourself back in when you're working at as a community pharmacist, what would you tell yourself? Or is there anything that like you reflect upon back as a previously licensed pharmacist? Now you're working so much. Uh, now you have a better life. Let's just kind of describe <laughs> it that way. Now you're enjoying what you do more, right? Is there anything mm-hmm. you would like to tell back your old self and say that, hey, this is how you know things should have worked out or something like that? Oh, yeah, I would have like gone and found Diana and said, teach me your ways to start in pharmacy school because, wow, I should have started sharing my voice online in pharmacy school. And as soon as I got licensed, like just to start sharing from the beginning, even if you don't have a business, you know, if you don't have anything to sell, just to get in the habit of sharing like what you're learning what you're doing and um, consolidating any information of like what's going on in the news. Here's what's most important to me. That skill and that talent is the one thing that's like kind of changed my world and given me a lot of confidence. And I wish I'd started that sooner and been more like Diana. She needed to give me lessons back <laughs> in 2010 when I graduated. Thank you. Honestly. Oh, sorry to cut you off, but Honestly, it was, it started with my <laughs> lack of confidence. My sister was the one who pushed me. She was like, you can do it. I was like, no, I'm not good for this. <laughs> I can't do this. People are going to probably laugh at the content I make. And the first couple of videos are pretty laughable that I see now. I'm like, oh my God, what was I doing? <laughs> like, I, should, I probably should archive those videos because it was just, it was, I used to, so like, this actually started 2000, like end of 2021, I was inspired by, I watched this movie about a patient having dementia and Alzheimer's and they kind of forgot their whole life and what they've done, like they're pretty much like what they've done and they were just kind of focused on the moment. And it was a really sad movie and it really touched me a lot. It was kind of really emotional. And after that, I decided to vlog every single day of my life with short clips of like what I do in the day. Um, And I would just post these for myself. I would just like up, like do them through TikTok, add a sound on it, and then just like short clips of what I would do today, um, just to pretty much like, <laughs> I know I wouldn't be too afraid of getting dementia or Alzheimer's, but just if I do ever get memory loss, I know what I did in my day. And this kind of like led like starting pharmacy school. And now when I go back and look at all those videos, I see, oh, this is what I did that day. Or the day, I, like, it's like, also capturing my milestones of like, oh, the day I entered my application for pharmacy school or the day I was interviewing. And it just kind of like seeing your like your growth through those videos, it really makes you happy and makes you feel like, oh, I remember that day or I remember that when that happened. And you just feel kind of wholesome the whole time you're watching it. So, and I'm like a very big person on memories and nostalgia. So that's what kind of leads me also to opening my TikTok account. And then just that little push, which my sister was for me. And she pushed me, she's like, you could just, just do it. She's also she's also a graduate pharmacy um she's now a pharmacist. She graduated in May this year. But she was like, you know, I can help you on with this. I can film at work and show you what I do at work. And I was like, Well, you cause it it gets really scary in the beginning. You're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm doing the right things. I don't like you wanna do like you wanna have like, you know, brand deals or like you also wanna make a career out of this, but I just I was I went in completely blind, not knowing what I was doing until now. <laughs> kind of growing. (laughs) Well, I think that's how you start is like not knowing, but just being willing to show up and be authentically transparent that you don't know what you're doing and don't ever archive those videos. Like I'm a big fan of your past being really cringeworthy and being embarrassed of like what your past was, because that means you've grown. And if you're not embarrassed, it means you haven't moved on. And so I think it's a really good sign that like Three years ago, six months ago, even two weeks ago, I'm like, oh, that was awkward. But that's awesome because it shows your progress and your growth. And I don't know, like even as a consumer, it's really cool to see not people where they are on top of a mountain with like achieving everything, but like seeing those awkward moments because that's what makes us human and gives us courage. Like they can do it. I can too. They didn't just wake up one day with like this huge following and all of the things they ever wanted. It happened day by day, step by step. Most all of the days felt like, well, not that much happened, but I was consistent. And that really changes your whole trajectory if you zoom out enough. Exactly. Honestly, going back to like the growth part aspect of it, it 
some days there are days where oh this video went viral or this video did really good and there's the days where like you put a lot of work and effort into that video and it just doesn't do as well as you expected it to do yep. and it does get kind of bumming at times and i actually took a break for like a really long time over the summer just because i wasn't feeling you know creative or motivated it was kind of also vacation and i was like i think i need a vacation from just everything i was just feeling a little burnt out at the end of the last year it was just a lot because pharmacy school as much as it has this highs, sometimes it just really brings you down and you're just at a place where you just cannot physically study anymore. So I feel like that summer vacation was pretty good. So I kind of also took a break from my social media and just went on a full detox of like focusing on myself. Coming back, it was harder to grow because, you know, once you're like at a really high growth, like growth, like growing, you're suddenly coming to a stop or even coming down. So rejuvenating like, and getting the account back up was also kind of hard. But, you know, again, it's not about the numbers. It's always about how many people you influence and how many people you can help out with it. The numbers do help, yes. <laughs> I'm not saying they won't be helping or they won't make you feel better. But knowing that I got five followers or knowing that I helped somebody make like decide on something or helping them inspire them, that will always weigh more to me than like the five followers. And now you know what taking what it's like. Like you took a break and how good that felt and what taking a break does and if it's hard to, er, to come back and like now you can go forward knowing that whether you choose to do that again or not. Like everything is about experimenting and just figuring out what works best for you. Like honestly the best said right there because you don't know when you need a break. It, you, you'll you just kind of like overwork yourself, work yourself until like you're – you just physically shut down. You're just like, mm -hmm. no, I don't want to do this. I'm just going to leave it to the side. And the minute you start procrastinating, you know that you should probably take like a couple of breathers for yourself. Because yeah. last year I was doing everything that I could going in every, like I was like in five, seven clubs being like the curriculum meeting for the curriculum um, representative for my class, being an SGA, being in like VP of admissions for my school as well. I was just doing everything that was out there. Because I never got to experience this in high school. Was, in high school and college, I was mostly focused on studying and I did not do anything else except work. And I didn't want that to be like that. I wanted to at least kind of like um, experience it before. Like this was my last school. So doing everything and then going from doing nothing and doing everything all at once, it really did get overwhelming. But, you know, for, <laughs> with all planning, <laughs> with organizing, you will always get to where you need to be at. Yes. So to conclude our episode today, any words of advice for pharmacy students who are watching? Oh yeah, absolutely. Have fun with pharmacy school. And while you're in pharmacy school, make it work for you. Don't say like, okay, I'm going to do the work. And then once I graduate, I'll figure out what I want to do. While you're in school, be very aware of what your passions are and what you really like within school and without of school. And find like what part of pharmacy is exciting to you and what in life, like your skills you're really good at. And I'm talking about like off resume, like what do you love to do where you lose track of time and would just do it for free because you love it so much and just be aware of those things and aware of needs in the world and like how you can start meeting that. Um, because you are so unique and when you create something that's as unique as you are, then people are magnetized to it and you have an asset that you take with you through the rest of your life. So even if it's just a strong personal brand that makes you way more hireable because you stand out from everyone else, or like Diana, you create a presence that people are drawn to, just be yourself, be authentically yourself and share the things you love and are passionate about because that's what people want to hear. And start now in pharmacy school, sharing your voice online, whether it's like me on LinkedIn, like Diana on TikTok, there's so many different social media platforms. It doesn't matter which one you pick, do the one that's most like you and be consistent every single day, share something ab about you, either you're, something you're learning in the world, something you experienced. That habit of sharing online every day will teach you a lot and it will also help you be a North Star of what you actually like because you find what you like most by doing and talking about that subject. So don't be scared to like start talking about it now and be very excited to follow what your heart is called to, not what is the best opportunity in pharmacy today. Because you got to do what you love and bring your own special sauce to that to really stand out in the world. And it's a great time to be a pharmacist. So pat yourself on the back that you're here. Ignore all the naysayers. You're in the right place. Just make yourself unique and valuable and the best you that no one could ever replace. 
Thank you so much. Anything to add on, Diana? Uh, honestly, Dr. Wilkie hit on all the points. On um, I heard a lot of like, oh, you have to like make sure you study every day. Study for seven, eight hours a day. I was like, before going to pharmacy school, some of my mentors would just tell me like the upperclassmen would be like, oh, make sure that you do this beforehand. Yes, you do. You do need to finish all your work in pharmacy school. You do need to get your work done in a timely manner. You do need to realize new techniques. But in pharmacy school, is a time to learn learning in school but learning more about yourself as well you're growing as a human you're growing your mind is growing you're learning so many things so many disease states so many drugs so many mechanisms of actions a lot of pharmacokinetics your brain is growing huge and huge by the day with all the information you're getting but it's all will be worth it at the end just the couple of advice i would have would be first of all like dr wilkie said make sure you start documenting everything because one day you would want to look back on all this time you're the time you're in right now and i go back and look at the videos i was in last year and versus this year a lot has changed from then but it still makes you happy seeing okay i've done i've had growth you can you can like visualize your growth through that another thing i would say is time management is key i came into toward like pharmacy school without like time management being like <laughs> Zero. It was like so bad. I went from completely like doing whatever I wanted to do to like having a full block schedule of like, this is what I'm studying. This is when I'm doing my break. This is when I'm eating. This is when I'm exercising. You need to schedule your breaks. You will not be motivated. Well, I was not motivated until I literally saw my break was like going to be in 45 minutes. I forced myself to say that full 45 minutes before going on my break. Put your phone away because <laughs> the phone is a big distractor. You put social media. I put social media time limits on myself because it really gets intense at times. When a, when somebody doesn't want to study, they'll like honestly, it's like human nature. You just you'll find something to procrastinate and do something else or do the easier way out or find something to like entertain yourself. Sometimes you need to entertain yourself later, study first, and then go back to the entertaining. There's always time for entertainment. My mom always says that there's always time for entertainment. Just get your all your work done the second you come home, get done, and then have maybe 10, 15 minutes of the end of the night. Have um, like your little watch a bit of your show or watch TikTok or Instagram or whatever do you, that makes you happy. Give time to yourself. Honestly, this is a time where you're going through a change. You're going to go through many hard, some hardships. And just give time to yourself to allow yourself to process everything that's coming in to your way because a a lot of people say pharmacy school is like you're being sprayed with a hose. A lot is coming towards you at one time. You're going to be, if you're holding leadership positions, there's, they're going to be a lot, asking a lot from you in that in like role. Or if you're doing like, you know, school in general, it's just a lot. Have a plan, be organized, try time manage. These are all the cliche ones, but they really matter the most. You, you're going to learn about yourself during this time as well. So have your great support system. That's a really big thing for me. I had my sisters, my older sisters, my parents. They were always out there. Whenever I needed food on demand, I'd be like calling my mom. I'd be like, mom, I'm coming home. What do we have ready for food? I have to study. I have an exam tomorrow. She would always be like, okay, I got that for you. Or have some, sometimes my sisters will bring me fruit or water or whatever. Whenever I'm having block weeks, not on an everyday normal thing, but during my like exam weeks, I would get you know special treatment just because they were there to support me or make me a cup of coffee during the late night. It really matters most who's around you, who's there to support you, and who's helping you, motivating you. Because if you're not being motivated, it's really hard to motivate yourself sometimes. Sometimes you just feel like you're hitting a dead end. And it's being resilient is another thing in pharmacy school. So that's kind of my little spiel on it. That it's a lot of cliche things, but it's things that if you actually implement the right way, you will see results out of it, and you will grow and be successful. And don't don't stress too much. Don't a lot of people say, but manage your stress. That's another key thing. Managing stress is very important. Stress can very much overtake you and that can internalize and cause many other, you know, problems for you later on. So make sure to manage your stress and meditate. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, I ditto what she says. Manage your stress and don't compare yourself to anyone else. Don't compare yourself. Their journey is not your journey. They're probably not any happier than you. They, everyone's just living their own life the best they can. So build your life intentionally to the best life that you want, not what other people expect of you, not what you should do. 
build your life intentionally, find joy in it now, not when you're a pharmacist, not when you've retired, find joy now. And you'll be able to create a lot of cool things because you're coming from a place of joy and happiness and like just creating for the pleasure of it rather than needing to do something and needing the external validation because that doesn't actually bring joy. It just (laughs) sends you down a rabbit hole of comparison that makes you actually feel worse than you started. So just enjoy where you are and create with joy. Thank you so much. Uh, As always, hit the like if you enjoy it and share this with your peers. Click the subscribe and notification bell for our latest content. Go give a follow to our social media and as well as our guests, respective social media in the link down below. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. See ya. Thank you. Bye.